G'day Starlo here. In my YouTube clips you're probably fairly used to seeing me using reasonably good Shimano gear from the mid to upper end of the price range. I love that gear and I reckon that you get more bang for your buck in that mid price range these days than we ever have in the past. But I also understand that a lot of people can't afford to pay three or four or five hundred dollars for a fishing outfit. So I've accepted the challenge to try a couple of outfits valued at well under $200. In fact, if you shop around, I reckon you might get at least one of these outfits for more like 140 or 150 bucks. That's pretty good value. So what is it that I'm gonna use? Well, I've got a new Sienna 2500 HG reel and the Shimano Katana 2500 HG. Let's dive straight in, unbox these reels and see what they've got to offer. I'm gonna start off with the Sienna. So we've got the specifications here on the end of the box. Better slip my glasses on for this. <laughs> and with the Sienna, I can see that it's got a gear ratio of 6.2 to one. That's because it's the HG or high geared version. It's got a maximum of four kilos of drag, which again is very good in a reel at this end of the range. The reel weighs 250 grams or 8.8 .8 ounces in the old money three plus one bearings, and it retrieves 88 centimetres of line per handle turn when the spool's full. And then we've got some information down here on the line capacities, which I've got to say I always take with a bit of a grain of salt. All right, well, the first thing in the box is just a simple cardboard spacer. That's just in there to stop the reel rattling around, I think. And, of course, we've got the all-important paperwork, the 10-year guarantee. Yep, even on a reel at this end of the market, well under 100 bucks, you're still getting that 10-year reel warranty. That's not too bad, is it? And there's your instruction booklet. The other thing worth noting, though, is inside the box itself is an exploded diagram of the reel, and on the other end, an actual parts list with the parts numbered. It'd be really handy if you were needing to order spare parts. And Shimano's backup in terms of after sale service is really, really good. And of course, like most spinning reels sold in the Australian market, it comes with the handle on the right hand side because that's the way most Aussies use them. But I prefer to wind my spinning reels with my non dominant left hand. So it's very easy for me to quickly swap it over. It's interesting. These more budget priced reels tend to have a handle assembly like this. It's actually a post that goes in through a slot and then you screw in from the other side. The handle assembly itself doesn't screw in. Now, in the past, I've always looked at reels that have got that handle set up as being slightly inferior because over time you can develop a little bit of play. But I've got to tell you, this one is pretty tight to start with. Let's just get that done up nice and tightly. And there it is. The Sienna 2500. Cosmetically, it's a really smick looking reel. Appearance wise, it actually reminds me a little bit of a Vanford or a Stratic CI4, much more expensive reels. And I tell you what, it's pretty smooth. It's not as quiet as some of those more expensive reels. I can actually just hear the gears working. But you know, it's smooth. The bail arm mechanism seems to work extra well. So I'm looking forward to spooling that up. I think I'll probably put some eight pound braid on it, match it up to a rod that I'll show you in a minute and get it out and give it a go. All right, so that's the Sienna. I'll put that aside. Okay, let's have a look at the stats on the Katana box and I better put the glasses back on again. 6.2 to one. Again, it's the HG version, so it's quick. Four kilos of maximum drag setting. The reel weighs in at 260 grams or 9.2 ounces. So it's 10 grams heavier than the Sienna. And I think that's because of the slightly sturdier construction. Three plus one bearings. And it reckons that it retrieves 91 centimeters of line per handle turn when it's full. That sounds like a pretty quick retrieve rate to me. I might check that once I get it spooled up. Very similar price, a few dollars more perhaps. Again, we get our little bit of cardboard. We get our paperwork and Here's the reel, once again, set up for right hand wind. So I'll quickly swap it over to the left. Different cosmetics on this one, very understated. I'd call that battleship gray, I think. <laughs> and the same handle assembly that I was talking about before, where the post goes through and then the screw goes into the other end of it. 
make sure that little nylon or plastic retainer stays on there as well and goes in first. Make sure it engages correctly. Screw it up. Screw it up nice and tight. Just finger tight. You don't need to use pliers or anything like that. But get it nice and tight with your fingers. There we go. Now both of these reels have got three plus one bearings, which means they've got three sets of ball bearings and one roller bearing, which is pretty good for a reel at this end of the market. And I'm really surprised at how smooth they are out of the box. I would have to say that the Katana feels just a little bit smoother to me than the Sienna, and it's definitely quieter. It hasn't got that little slight hum that I was getting out of the Sienna. That's as quiet as some of the far more expensive reels in the Shimano range. Once again, bail arm works like a treat. I'm looking forward to spooling this one up. I'll put eight pound braid on this as well. So we've got eight pound braid on both of them and I'll take them out and go finesse fishing with lures and see how they stack up to the outfits that I normally use that are two, three, four times more expensive. Oh, and I almost forgot a really exciting piece of news. At the end of this video, I'm gonna give both of these reels away to someone watching. <laughs> so stay tuned to the end to find out how you might be able to pick one up for yourself. Unfortunately, if you're watching this after the 30th of June, 2023, the competition will have been run and won. But stay tuned, because I'll be doing other ones in future. All right, we're gonna need some rods to put these two reels on. So in keeping with the budget approach, I'm going to put the Sienna on a tie pan. This tie pan is the Estuary Spin 702. Now 702 means that it's seven feet zero inches long and two piece. That's the way the coating system works on Shimano rods. 702, seven foot, two piece. If it was 762, it'd be seven foot six inches, two piece. If it was 781, it'd be seven foot eight inches, one piece, and so on. So it's pretty easy to understand. It's rated for lines between two and four kilos. Again, that doesn't mean a heck of a lot in the braid age, but it gives you a bit of an idea. It's a reasonably light rod, seven foot long. And I'm blown away that it actually says here on the swing tags, but it's got Fuji guides. I'll have to find out a bit more about that. That's really cool. There are seven guides and a tip, which again is pretty good for a budget priced rod. And maybe the only thing that I don't like about it cosmetically is this clear tip, but that's all about it being really strong up this end. Don't do silly stuff with it though, but it is solid here in the tip, which does give it a bit of bit more inherent strength if you do happen to whack it against something or <laughs> heaven forbid, stick it in the old overhead fan. Great way to break a rod, that. All right, so that one, I'll put the Sienna on. And for the Katana reel, why not a Katana rod? Now, cosmetically, you're either going to love this one or hate it. I quite like them with this little bit of white here near the butt. The red logo, the Katana logo. This one's a 742 spin. So in other words, seven feet, four inches long, two piece. And it's rated for one to three kilo lines, a little bit lighter than the tie pan. And being longer and lighter, this is going to be a really nice finesse rod, I reckon. Something for chucking soft plastics and light hard bodies and baits on. All right, I'm going to spool these two up, go out and spend a day or two fishing with them and give you an honest report on what it's like to go fishing with a sub $200 outfit from Shimano. In fact, an outfit that you could probably shop around and pick up for 150 bucks. Let's see how they perform. Well, I know I said I was going to put the Katana reel on the Katana rod, but then I had a look at them and thought, wow, the cosmetics of the Sienna <laughs> really sit rather nicely with the Katana rod. So I'm gonna start off with it on here, I'll probably swap them around later. So I've got the Sienna 2500 on the Katana rod. I've got a little soft plastic rig, just a squidgy prawn on a fairly light jig head. And I'm just wading some flats here, right behind the Blue Dolphin Caravan Park in Yamba in the lower Clarence River. It's fairly early in the morning, the tide's falling, and I figured there might be a flathead out here. Let's find out if there is. This is what I'm looking for. This is a flathead lie. You can see the shape in the sand there where a flathead's been lying. He's been facing out that way. So he's been here, I think, on the incoming tide as the water's 
flooding in across these flats. Not a particularly big fish, I doubt that it'd even be legal. It might be close to it, but it's a good sign. They've certainly been here. Let's see if we can find a bigger one. These large circular holes are made by stingrays sucking yabbies and worms and things out of the sand and they make these circular depressions. They can make hundreds of them during one tide. And over here is another very obvious flathead lie. Look at the shape of that. It's so clear. There's his head at that end, tail at that end. Again, he's been facing out this way. Let's see if we can catch one. Oh, I've got to say, so far I'm quite impressed with this little katana rod. Okay, it's a little bit sloppier in the tip than some of the more expensive Shimano rods that I fish with, but it casts rather crisply. And I don't think there's any difference to the distance that I'm casting, that's for sure. And I can certainly feel what the soft plastic's doing out there. I know as soon as I've picked up a bit of weed. The reel's nice and smooth. You'll probably notice that I've deliberately underfilled the reel slightly. I think one of the problems that people run into is overfilling their reels, especially with braided line. It's really tempting to do it, and I do it myself sometimes too. And they cast brilliantly for the first couple of casts, but then you get a loose loop and a tangle and you end up having to cut 20 meters of line off anyway. So you're probably better off to start just slightly under full compared to the old illustrations you've seen where it's filled right up to the lip and I think this is particularly the case on these more economical reels that perhaps don't have quite a sophisticated line laying system as some of the more expensive ones so I've deliberately slightly underfilled it to hopefully prevent those tangles we'll see how that works out no hits yet of course forgotten to bring my polarized sunglasses with me this morning I'll have to walk back to the camp and grab them in a minute because the sun's starting to break through now the other great debate that I run into all the time on YouTube people say oh you should close your bail arm by hand not to turn the reel I've always been one to just rely on the auto trip mechanism of the reel as far as I'm concerned a bunch of very clever engineers spent a lot of time and effort trying to make that work and uh, I might as well use it. I know that if you close it by hand, you're probably gonna have less chance of getting those loose loops, but the thousands of casts that you make during a day, I reckon using the auto function just uh, smooths out the whole process. I'm here in very early winter and this water is already starting to cool down. I'd say it's probably about uh, 19 degrees, 18 or 19 degrees, a little bit chilly around my bare legs this morning, but still very much flathead water. This is a great flat out here, and there's the odd uh, patch of weed. I wouldn't be at all surprised if there's a flatty or two lying out here on the falling tide. It doesn't cast quite as well into the wind, of course. A little bit of a westerly blowing here this morning. With no action so far on the flats, I take a wander out onto the Blue Dolphin's higher boat jetty for a flick. Here I cast down between the rows of boat mooring boys and almost straight away I get a hit of sorts. <laughs> yeah, he's tiny. Oh, that's a good sign. Right. With just one tiny flatty on the Sienna and Katana outfit, I ducked back to camp for my sunnies and a bit of a gear change before hitting the flats in a slightly different spot. Ah, this is more like it. Look at that for a lovely flatty lie. You can see his head there, and the fins at the side, and then the tail back here. That's a really nice fish. And the same fish lay over here. This one's quite eroded, but you can still see the lie. Both were facing in towards the bank, so I suspect it was on the run out tide. That fish might be out here somewhere in front, so let's have a look. All right, now for comparison purposes, I've put the katana reel on the katana rod and uh, we'll see how that stacks up 
and I've changed lures from my soft plastic. I've gone to a little uh, BT bait, one of the swim baits from the Shimano stable, a nice little one that I've caught flathead on before. It's fairly shallow water in here, so it could work well. Again, you'll notice I've deliberately not overfilled the reel. I've probably got a little bit more on this one than I did on the Sienna, but um, still kept it well short of the lip. It's got a lovely feel, this reel. Very solid. Certainly belies its price point. It's amazing how shallow you'll find flathead as long as they've got enough water to cover their back. It's even worth casting back in towards shore, I think. This lure looks so good in the water, I hope you can see it. <laughs> it's got a toadfish following it at the moment. Just sinks very slowly on the pause. Perfect for a flathead. I'm fanning my casts to cover as much water as I can. Oh, that was a big mullet. Oh! <laughs> Uh, people ask me, why do mullet jump? My typical answer is, because they can. <laughs> Looks like fun. Sure, they jump when things are chasing them, but that one was just having a good time. I'll try a couple of casts along parallel with the shore. And that rod is just really nice. Oh, there we go, there's a fish. <laughs> oh, he jumped on that little swim bait. Just a small flat out, I think. First bit of movement out of the lure, and he smacked it. He's only a little fella, and he's managed to get himself fell. Oh, no, he's not fell hooked. He's just uh, taken it a bit strangely. Mm -hmm. Well, that was where that bit of bait flicked in along there. So there we go. A little flatty on the swim bait. I've got some pliers in my pocket. But I think I'll be able to get it out. Watch me get spiked. <laughs> you really whacked that. I should get my pliers out, but... Casting parallel to the shore. Unfortunately, I didn't find a bigger flatty, although I spotted a few of these flat critters, <laughs> which made me extra careful about my barefoot wading. Eventually, I gave it away for the day and headed back to camp to make a plan for next morning. I'd quite like the look of that jetty, so that's where I headed at sunup. Right out onto the end this time. Alright, so I've come out onto the end of the little jetty here at the uh, Blue Dolphin Resort in Yamba this morning. It's pretty early, it's quite chilly, rather overcast, and there's a fairly strong southerly blowing, but we're a little bit sheltered from it here. And I'm going to have a go at some bait fishing this morning, put a little bit of burley in, fish a few baits, because I figure that's the sort of thing that a lot of people are going to do with this more budget priced gear from Shimano. Let's see how it goes. First step was to soak some bread and establish a burley trail. I'm not going to put too much in to start with, just in case it attracts a lot of toadfish and small fish. I did actually see a brim moving around down there a little bit earlier, so I'll just put a small amount of burley in. Tide's still running out at the moment, but it looks at things just very slowly. We're getting quite close to the bottom of the tide. I'll put a little piece of prawn on, unweighted, and drop it in there. Just got some ordinary old shop-bought servo frozen prawns here, which is what 
a lot of people use for bait. Nothing wrong with them either. There are better baits, of course. If you go and catch your own bait, you'll normally do a lot better, but I thought I'd give this a go. I can already hear something into the burling. <laughs> Let's have a look. Uh, something's going on out there. Mm, swirls. So I've got a fairly small hook, no sinker. And I'm going to conceal... Oh my goodness. Something is getting into the bread. Ooh, those don't look like tiny fish. <laughs> See what happens if I drop this bit of unweighted prawn in there. I better make sure I've got some drag set on here. I'm on the tie pan rod now and I reckon it's perfect for this job. And just sink slowly through the water column. Oh, and something's got it already. Look, the line tightened up and I'm on. <laughs> oh, that took seconds. <laughs> What do we got? A little brim, I'd say. I saw a flash. Yep. Oh, this rod's so much fun. Beautiful. <laughs> He's almost legal, too. And because I didn't give him too long with the bait, it's just pinned there in the corner of the mouth. What I'll do is just walk up here a little bit and let him go so he doesn't scare the others because there might be some bigger ones in there. You go down in there, mate. There are definitely some bigger swirls out here. I'm sure there are some better brim. But uh, marina brim and harbour brim can be pretty smart at times. Oh wow, it's all happening. Probably could have used a bigger hook. I will change to one in a minute. Any of my little bait scraps I also throw in the water to add to my burly trail. Oh, that was a better one out wider. Let's flick it out there. I'm just watching the line on the surface of the water here. Yep, there we go. Oh, I missed him. I could let them run further and almost definitely hook them, but I don't want to gut hook fish, especially when a lot of them are likely to be undersized. Oh, right out the back there, we'll see if there's one. So I'm watching the line floating on the surface. The braid actually floats on the surface, which is nice. It works like a bite indicator. Nothing so far. I may have cast too far out the back of the burley. Yeah, see the fish are all in a bit closer where the bread's floating. Oh, hang on, hang on. The braid just gave a little bit of a twitch. Definitely not in the zone. Mm, I think I'm going to have to cast shorter where the where the burly is. Make sure my hook is still as concealed in the bait as possible. Right. I'm in amongst the burly. There we go. There's a bite. Just saw it. Yep, yep, the line's moving now. And I missed him. I'll leave it there in case there's still some bait. Yep, another one grabbed it. Oh, he's tiny. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> Little tiny brim. Or is it a tar wine? It's a tar wine. There we go. That's really interesting. Very, very similar to the brim and in the same family. A bit more rounded forehead profile and these longitudinal golden stripes which actually consist of a little golden spot on each scale to create the longitudinal stripes and again just pin nicely because I struck him quickly let's get a bait out there 
Now, this is what can get annoying when you're burly with bread, especially if you let too much of it float, is you'll bring the seagulls in. And then they'll grab your bait, and it's just not a lot of fun. Now, hopefully this bait will get down before a seagull gets to it. Because there's still fish there. Oh, that got bitten straight away, and I got him. Is he any bigger? No. <laughs> There's a lot of little ones out there. <laughs> that first one I got was the better one so far. If you bring the kids out to do this, you can teach them all sorts of things about fishing and about handling fish and letting the little ones go. All the good stuff. Wow, he seems to be milting, which is just bizarre. There's no way that fish could be sexually mature at that size, you wouldn't think. Time for another bait. I'm really impressed with how this taipan rod casts these small, unweighted baits. That softer tip is ideal for the job, <laughs> and there's not much waiting between bites. Got one. Oh, what have we got? Came straight up and busted up on the surface. I think it's only a print. Yep. Even at that size, they just fight so hard. All right. I'll actually switch to a slightly larger hook with a longer shank so that I can use some slightly bigger baits. See if we can find a better fish in here. It's just a little fine gauge long shank hook. It's probably about a number six. And see how I take a little bit of time just to make sure I've got the bait presented nicely. It's straight, the hook's concealed, and yet the point is just exposed. So I should be able to hook a fish quite easily. Now they've just about eaten all the burley out here, which might be a good time for them to find a bait instead. There's one. Uh, it's pretty small. There are so many little brim in here. Little brim and little tar wine, which this is another one of. I'm sure you can see the difference now. The stripes on the Taiwan are quite obvious, those longitudinal golden stripes. This fin down here is also not as long as it is in a brim. The spines aren't as long in it. Pretty little fish. They grow to a really nice size, especially up in this part of the world. I've caught them off the rocks up here to well over a kilo and they grow to double that and more. Great little fish. Got some of that bait back, but I'll top it up. Fishing off jetties like this with bait really takes me back to my childhood. <laughs> and I just don't get sick of it. So much fun. This is the thing to do with the kids. Rather than take them out and chase really big fish or go lure fishing where there might be a long time between bites and they tend to lose their patience, take them out where they're actually going to get action. Put some burley in, put small hooks and baits in and make sure they're catching something. They'll really enjoy themselves. Brings out the kid in me. Okay, so it's gone a bit quiet. They've eaten all the burley and the fish have dispersed. So what I'm gonna do is mix up some more burley and I'm gonna try and make sure that it's, um, most of it's soaked so that it sinks rather than attracting all those annoying seagulls. Look at the sunrise out here. The sun's come up and it's behind those clouds and it's just beautiful. Wouldn't be a very nice day out to sea though, which is why all the trawlers and longliners and yachts and everything are still here in the harbour. No one really wants to go out there today, and I don't blame them. All right, time for some more burley. I'll tell you what though, I'll plonk that out the front and just set it. Spot. I'll drop that down in there, make sure that rod can't get pulled out of there. 
Yeah, it possibly can. No, no that's good. <laughs> and uh, I'll let that sit there while I get some burley. What I should really do is put some water in my bucket and make my burley mix up there, but I'm being a bit lazy this morning. Those bigger pieces, you're better off to break them up. I can see a heap of little toadfish down here. I do not want to catch those. Oh, getting a bite on my set bait here. Now, a fair bit of that has floated, so we are going to have... Oh, there's a fish. <laughs> Did you hear that rod go off? Oh, it's the best one of the morning too, I think. <sighs> Bait sat on the bottom out there, and something a little bit bigger picked it up. <laughs> Not really much bigger. I think that first brim I got was still the biggest one. He was close to legal if he wasn't legal. These are definitely not. These are actually not bad bait prawns. Quality of bait prawns can be a little bit mixed sometimes. You get packets with really small ones at times, but these are just about perfect. I'll go for a bit bigger bait. See if we can find a bigger fish. And I'll cast it out there again until the burly starts to work. Drop it out there, get it onto the bottom. It's only, oh, I don't know, maybe 1.7, 1.8 meters deep out there. Nice soft tip on this Taipan rod is ideal for this kind of thing. Pop it in there again. <sighs> oh, I'm having too much fun. <laughs> Here we go. The fish have found the burly. See the swirls out there? There could be some mullet there now. There was some fish on the surface. But uh, those are brim that are coming up and busting the floating bread off the surface and making quite a swirl and a boil. And even the fairly small brim can make quite a disturbance. But I reckon some of those are bigger fish. Oh, yeah. I'd have to bring my bait in and drop it in there. Got one. <laughs> this actually feels like a slightly better fish. No, not really. They just pull so hard. See how the choice of that longer shanked hook is, is making sure that I can get at the hook to get it out to the corner of the jaw hook up. That small amount of blood is from the hook and it won't do the fish any harm. Ah, the seagulls found the burley. And the seagulls ate just about all the floating burley that was out there where the brim were. I'm hoping the brim might still be underneath. And they are. Got another one. Oh, I just need to get one of the bit bigger ones. Oh my goodness. That's tiny. But that's a little brim, not a tar wine, that one. Have a look at that and I'll put the image of the tar wine down here in the corner and you can compare it. See the difference? My session was coming to an end, but before leaving I wanted to try one last trick. I'd spotted some bigger brim lurking under the pontoon, so I threw some burly in along the front, close to cover and rigged another bait. This looked promising. So what I'm doing here, it's a bit like lure fishing. I'm getting 
going to bait as close as I can to the pontoon so that it sinks down underneath. And the bigger brim feels safer under there with a bit of colour overhead. Oh, goodbye. I'm hitting them quick, as I said, so that I don't hook them deep, so I am going to miss plenty. It's fun. Yep, there's a bite, there's a bite, there's a bite. And I missed him. And there's another bite. And I got him. Oh, 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 oh. He's under the pontoon. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's so much fun. Imagine a big one. <laughs> I'd be in all sorts of trouble. <laughs> he went right back in under the pontoon. Well, I certainly give this outfit a big tick for this style of bait fishing. Too much fun. And this is the sort of gear you should buy the kids, not the real cheap kids outfits that you see sometimes, you know, the $30, $40 outfits. Spend $150, $160 bucks and they're going to have an outfit that will last them for years if they look after it and teach them how to look after it. I did a YouTube clip a fair while back on how to maintain your gear. Make sure you check it out. I'll put it up here. It was time for me to go, but I just can't help myself. <laughs> Walking back up the jetty, I spotted a couple of slightly better brim hanging around one of the moorings, and I had one bait left. What's that old saying about one last cast? Hmm. I've finally got a decent one. Sight casting to them. Well, I guess decent is a comparative term when you've been catching little ones all morning. Certainly legal. Now it was definitely time to go. Besides, I'd run out of bait. Well, i got to tell you, after using them fairly intensively for a couple of days up here at Yamba, I'm really impressed with these two budget priced outfits from Shimano for well under $200 you can get into this sort of gear these days so there's no excuse for not having good gear oh and remember I said I was going to give these two reels away look I'd love to give the rods away as well but they're too hard to post but I'm going to give the reels away I'm going to give the katana to a current subscriber to the channel someone who already subscribes to my Stalo Gets Real channel who gives me a suggestion in the comments down below on something they'd like to see me make a video about in the future and whichever one I like best will win the katana that's for an existing subscriber if you're not already a subscriber and you subscribe in the next week or so you'll go in the running to win the Sienna I'll just pick one at random from my new subscribers unfortunately it all wraps up on the 30th of June 2023 so if you're watching this after that date I'm afraid you missed out on the competition I'll be announcing the winners down below here on the 1st of July. Good luck. <laughs> You'll like these reels, trust me. Anyway, until next time, this is Starlo wishing you tight lines. I might go back out on the jetty and have another fish.